Welcome on this lesson in uh, quadratic functions I'm going to be factoring special cases so that would be perfect square binomials and difference of squares and that sort of thing just ones that look weird in the end of all things let me do uh, get in the right view here so the first one says n uh, times r squared minus 12 r plus 4 now I need to see if there's common factor in here obviously there isn't because 3 doesn't go with 4, that whole thing. So this means I'm going to do slide and divide. If you haven't watched the slide and divide video, it might be a good idea. So I'm going to slide this over here, and it becomes this multiply times 9 becomes 4 times 9. So I break it into r squared minus 12r plus 36. Now I can look at my signs to see what kind of answers that I have access to. Well this says, this sign here says they're going to be the same. This one says they're both going to be minus. So I'm doing r minus something and r minus something else. Now I need to do a factor list for 36 and remember if the signs are the same down here I'm going to add factors to get to 12. So I know that 1 and 36 is a component to this, uh, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9 and 6 and 6. Those are my factors of uh, 36. I think 6 plus 6 equals 12 last time I checked. So this is my factor set. Since they're the same sign, it obviously doesn't matter what order they go in. Now that would be my slide part. Now I need to do my divide. When I, I remember I need to divide by the number that I slid over. Uh, from here I need to reduce those fractions so I get r minus 2 over 3 and r minus 2 over 3 and once again you can't leave fractions in this kind of quadratic factoring so what I'm going to do is bump slide this 3 back up in front of this r so I end up with 3r and then I just bring down the minus 2 same thing for the other one it gets bump slid as well now you will notice that these are exactly the same thing 3r minus 2, so you would write it in this format. Squared. That way it shows that both of them are multiplying. 3r minus 2 squared does not mean you square 3r and then you square minus 2. It means you have to have the same term written twice and multiply them together. So this is your final answer right here. Not this stuff. <laughs> Let's go on to the next one. It's not super difficult to do these if you can slide and divide. I mean, you're welcome to make the larger factor trees, but I'm not, like, the greatest fan in the world of that idea, just because it takes forever. For me, it does. Um, let's try this one. So in this case, uh, I could pull out a common factor if there was one, but there isn't. So I do my 9 times 16, which is just a gigantic number that I realize now that I've sort of made stupid numbers that I have to think about more than I really want to. It's not a gigantic number, it's just annoying that I, I'm lazy. So it's 144. So I end up with a squared, how Canadian of me, uh, 24a plus 144. 24a. So um, I need to factor out 144. This sign says that my answers are going to be the same. This says they're both going to be plus, that's why I wrote a plus there. I'm anticipating your grade. Um, anyway, I know that 12 times 12 is 144, so I'm not going to sit there and do an entire factor list. And 12 plus 12 is 24, so this becomes 12, and this becomes 12. Once again, that was the slide. Now I just do the divide. And again, it doesn't give me an integer answer. What it gives me is a improper fraction in this case. Still cannot leave fractions here, so these need to be bumped. 3a plus 4. And since this is exactly the same thing, I'm going to save myself the step and write 3a plus 4 squared. So that is how you do that. The next setup that I want to deal with is hopefully the other type. This. Sometimes you'll get uh, no middle term. And you're sort of like, what the heck just happened? So when you end up doing this, The reality is this only works if you have no central term and you have squares for the front and the back. You'll notice that 16 is a square because the square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of 25 is 5. These are two squares and the n is of course squared. What I can do at this point is write the square root of 25 here, 
then I do the square root of n squared, which is n, then I do the square root of 16. I write that down twice. In order to get this minus, that would tell me that the signs are different. This is sort of the second sign. So my answer theoretically should be this, so let's just test it. 25 n squared, that looks good. Negative uh, 20 n, things are moving along smoothly here. And then if I do my combining like terms step, you'll notice that the 20s actually cancel out and you end up with 25 n squared minus 16. So in any situation where you have a set of squares like this and it's minus in the middle, if this is plus, this doesn't work, um, you just take the square root of the number and the variable, you put one with a plus and one set with a minus. Pretty simple stuff. I want to look and see if there's any more in this little compartment of questions that I want to do, but I think uh, that gives you the gist of the idea. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Um, remember, there are certain cases where you want to pull out a common factor. Um, this one isn't one of them, but uh, if it were, you could sort of have the numbers. You also notice that these are squares. That's how you can tell if the signs are the same or different. If the front end and the back end are squares, so 9 is a square, so is 16, and x squared is a square. This is one of those situations where it might be pretty simple to say, oh, well, if I just did 4 and 3 and 4 and 3 and x and x, this sign says that they're both the same. This one says they're plus. Should be this, right? Maybe I could rewrite it like this. And it is, because 16 squared, you'd be adding 12 and 12x, 12 12x and 12x together to get to 24x, and you end up with the plus 9. So that's a situation where you get special cases with quadratic factoring, making it a little easier on yourself by just sort of scouting the problem ahead of time, and things will be good for you. So good luck.